my robotic movement. I briefly touched on this topic about... Oh god, two years ago? Anyway, I talked on this topic about two years ago and I wanted to remake this tutorial because... Uh... No one wants to watch an unorganized 18 minute video of some dude yapping. In this video, we're gonna dive deep into the topic of robotic animation and how to perfect this style in just a few minutes. Now, before we dive in, I heavily suggest watching my video on the basics of animation because I won't be able to explain most stuff here and you might get confused. Alright, before we start animating, we gotta grab a model. Head over to DeviantArt and look up some FNAF models for Blender 3.0 or whichever Blender version you're using. When searched, you should see an entire gallery of model releases. Once you find one that you like, throw it onto the bottom of the said page and select the Google Drive link. Then when you find the model you like, select the three dots next to the name and hit the download button. Then when prompted, save it to your drive. Now to import our model. Go ahead and open up the old blender and select file, append, and find where you save your model. Once you find it, double click it and select the collection folder. Select the collection with the character's name and import. Alternatively, if you don't see this collection, just go to the object folder instead. And press A to select everything, then import. However, if you do this, there might be a bunch of extra parts like lights and stuff in your import. If this happens, just delete them. Alright, now we're going to set up the camera. Press Shift A and select the camera option. Then move your camera where you want it to be and press Ctrl, Alt, and Numpad 0 to snap the camera in that position. Press Shift and Backtick to move the camera around using the WSAD keys to move. You can use the scroll wheel if you want to adjust your speed. You can also go into your camera settings if you want to edit things like the focal length to make the model look more flatter or three-dimensional. Forgive me, I literally don't know how to explain focal length. Also, go to your output properties and set the frame rate to 30 frames per second. Then press the playback menu on your timeline and change play every frame to sync to audio. I'm not exactly using audio here, but it'll be handy just in case you are. Now, before we go any further, I need to explain some stuff. In the last animation tutorial, our goal was to make sure everything moved at a different time and had as much random movement as possible to make sure our characters were more lively. However, now that we're doing robotic movement, this rule doesn't exactly apply anymore. While things can still move at different times, they'll mainly move on one axis and basically follow one movement, completely going against what we tried doing before. We can get a better feel for this after looking at some reference from various sources to see how robots of this type would really move. With this knowledge in mind, it will be much easier for us to make our first pose with this kind of movement. What I want to do is have Bonnie turn around and look down, presumably towards someone in the audience, and kind of move his ears a bit. Now knowing that, we're going to set this first pose to look more neutral. In case you don't know already, press G to move, R to rotate, and S to scale. You can double click R if you want more control over your rotation, or you can press R and the axis you want the bone to move at to move it on one axis only. We're going to be using that a lot for this video. Set up a nice starter pose you're comfortable with and press A to select every bone, then I and hit the option named Location, Rotation, and Scale. Then select this recording button so we don't have to do this every single time. Now it's just a repetitive cycle of spamming space and animating. Here I have the movement set to local and I'm rotating Bonnie's torso by the bone's Y axis. I'm making a few keyframes here to have different variations in the speed. I'm sure this can be done with a graph editor, but I still have absolutely no idea how to use that. At the end of Bonnie's rotation, we're going to add a slight bounce at the end due to the amount of force it takes to move his torso. Make a keyframe moving his torso a slight bit backward, then duplicate the last keyframe and move it a few frames in front of the backward frame. We have to play around with the pacing of it if it looks kind of off or just unnatural. After that, it's just rinse and repeat. For the neck, we're going to do the same thing. One thing to note though is that when animating animatronics, the neck tends to move left to right and the head tends to move up and down. So when animating our neck, we can do as we did with the torso and animate it to turn towards the camera. Once done, we get it to bounce by moving a few frames to the front, moving the neck back, then duplicating the last movement and dragging a few frames forward. Then edit the keyframe pacing if it looks off, and we're done with the neck. Now for the head, we're gonna have it drop down as he turns. Animate his head to go down, then move a few frames forward and have it slightly go back up. Then duplicate the last frame and move it forward.
And just like that, we got a simple yet realistic bounce. Quickly going over to the jaw, we're going to animate his mouth closing with the same process. Animate the main movement, then add the bounce. And just like that, we're already getting good results. I went back to the torso and the neck to space out some keyframes because I felt like it was kind of too fast. You don't have to do this if this is my own personal preference, but it's still something to look out for. Alright, now the Enyo jaw is kind of a different case. While we could just animate it to mask the jaw's movement, we can make Blender do it for us. Go to the Bone Constraints tab and add a Copy Rotation modifier. Make the target the armature and the bone to be whichever bone you want it to copy. In this case, the jaw. Make sure to set the movements to its own local space and the move on its own axis. You can change the influence if you don't want the movements to be so strong. I'll just set it to 0.5. Now when we go through the animation, the other jaw is already animated to match the normal jaw. Easy, right? The next thing we can do is make his ears move too, like they do in the movie. But first, we're going to add a constraint to the other ear so we don't have to animate that one, like we did with the jaw. Do as we did before by adding a copy rotation constraint and set the bone to the other ear. But one thing you'll notice is that the bones are rotating on the same side, and we don't want that. First, we'll set it back to its local space and we'll invert it on the Y axis and the Z axis. Now when we move the bones, they're rotating on the opposite side while still moving downward on the same angle. Now go to where you'll animate the ears and press I so the bones in the same place until that point. Then do your thing. You're making the ears go down then up again. At the last movement, you can see that I'm trying to add a subtle bounce effect and playing with the spacing. Once the bounce is done, I add one more keyframe and move the ears slightly so they don't just come to a full stop. Going back to the head, we're going to add a keyframe where we want it to move again, then animate it to slightly go up. You don't have to add the bounce here, because it'll look very weird. Make sure to play with the spacing and the keyframes to prevent things from looking too fast. Now we're going to go back to the jaw and animate it to look like he said something. Press I to lock in the movement, then animate the jaw to swiftly go down. Then move a few frames forward and lock in the movement again. Then animate the jaw to close with a bounce at the end. Next, we're going to animate the eyelid to blink. Add a constraint to the left eyelid and start animating. Do as we did before, pressing I to make sure nothing moved before that point. Then move the eyelids on the x-axis to close. Press I after a few frames to hold it in place, then animate them to open again. and you've got the simple blink. Finally, a bonus detail you can add is the rotation of the bow tie. Animate the bow tie to kind of rock on the Y axis to the torso's movement. This isn't something you have to do, but it adds more detail and life to your animation. And after that, your animation should be complete. Future B speaking here, there's actually one more thing we need to do. 
I completely forgot to mention how to do the eyes for these animations. Those UFMP or FNAF models in general have this eye tracker bone that moves both eyes at the same time. Select this drop down menu and select texture, then select your eyes and go to the shader editor to find your eye texture. Select the image and your eyes should appear if you don't already see them. Then it's as simple as moving this on its axis quickly and adding a slight bounce at the end. If your model has normal eyes, then just add a copy rotation constraint to the other eye and do the same process, but rotate the eyes instead of moving them. Alright, now we're done. So after a little bit of rinse and repeat and throwing some constraints around, you should get a result like this. Pretty cool, right? Now, after lighting and adding some more stuff to your scene, you might be a little bit confused on all these render settings. Don't worry, I got you. So you can learn about picking the right render settings for your scene with this video here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.